Hey everyone, welcome back to KC3D Sparks. Today we're going to be creating a throne. So it's going to be something that would be fit for more of a dungeon or like a bandit's lair or something like that. Not so much a castle, unless it's, you know, maybe like a smaller castle or like just for a theme or something like that. I'll explain the design kind of as we go along. It's going to be like a four-legged chair with a super high back. So it'll still look pretty grand. And I'm picturing it wood, so I'm going to be painting it brown with some other details in it. Obviously, if you wanted it to be gold or silver or whatever, you can paint it out that way. But I will be adding in some nice details to it, but it'll still be kind of low-key. So nothing super crazy. So we will be starting with our default cube. Just go ahead and make sure you go over to your scenes tab and change up whichever unit of measure that you prefer to use. So I'll be using inches and I change the scale of my floor to quarter of an inch. So other than that, we are going to change up the size of the cube. So it will be like the seat of the chair and then we'll extrude off of that to make it how we want it to look. So for the X and Y, we are going to do one inch. And then for the Z axis, we are going to do quarter, whoops, quarter of an inch. So that'll be how we'll start. So let's go ahead, tab into edit mode. We're gonna cut this in half by hitting control R and adding a loop. And that way we can add in our mirror modifier. So let's grab these vertices and delete them. And then we'll go over here to our modifiers tab and add in our mirror modifier with the clipping. And I just like to check and make sure that it's good and it is perfect. We're gonna go into the side view, move this down to fit into the grid and you'll see why in one moment. But first let's add two loops here and we're going to size them along the Y axis to also fit in the grid and do one in the front and that one's already matching up with my grid line. Going to grab these two and they're a little bit thick. So what I'll do is I'll hit E to extrude and then we're gonna size them just a little bit. So I have like a nice little edging here. E to extrude, bring that down. We're gonna hold control so it'll snap perfectly to our grid. So there is there are our four chair legs. Now let's go ahead and add in our chair backing. So for this, all I'm going to do at the moment is hit E to extrude and we're gonna draw it up to about here. Cause let's see, we're about half an inch, one inch, and then this is one and a half. So I wanted it to be about two inches tall. So I'm gonna bring this halfway here and then we'll extrude up some more in a minute cause I want it to be like three pointed topping. Not sure if that makes sense, but I'll explain in a moment a little bit better. I do want the chair to have arms on it and some other details and we're gonna cut out a couple other things and add in some other details. So I guess we can go ahead and add on the top first and then we can worry about adding in our chair arms. So let's hit E to extrude. And we're just going to rotate this to be about there. And we will add a subdivision surface modifier in a moment as well to make it nice and rounded. E to extrude, size that along the X axis just a little bit. I don't want it that tall, probably about there. We're going to add a loop in. Whoops. Grab that one and make this pointed as well. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and add in the arm of the chair. Now for the arm, I want it to be against the edge of the chair, but we do need to add in two edge loops for it. So we'll go ahead, hit control R, add in two loops, size them along the Z axis. We're gonna bring them down. out there. That looks good. I'm going to grab this one here, hit E to extrude, and we're just going to snap it to here first. I might change it in a little bit. I wouldn't mind rounding it off, but we'll see how the subdivision surface modifier treats it later before I actually just try to round it off myself. Okay, so all we need now for the armrest is the bar to hold it up. 
or the rung. So we'll go ahead and add in two loops here. And we're gonna add two loops here. Now these two are already sized to how I want it, but these two, oh, and I need to add in two loops here. So first let's add these two, not three loops to match up with these so they'll line up properly. So this one looks pretty good. Let's grab this loop and pull it over. Awesome. And then we're gonna grab these edge loops, go into top view and size along the x-axis to make it a little bit more square. That looks good. Then all we have to do is grab these two faces and bridge them together. Awesome. May not be perfect, but I kind of like it being imperfect. Awesome. So what we'll do next is we will go ahead and actually add in our subdivide subdivision surface modifier to see how it is looking. I will crank it up to three probably. So obviously we do have a lot of edges to sharpen since it smoothed it out way too much, but that's okay. So first let's go ahead and sharpen up the top since we know we definitely want these edges sharp. You don't want to do it that way because if you do it that way then it's going to sharpen all of these and we want to make sure that these are nice and rounded. So we'll just grab one side at a time. Don't forget that one. That's looking good. I might do, let's add a little detail here, see how it looks. Instead of sharpening all of these edges. Yeah, I like that better instead of just making them square. Little simple detail, but very, very easy and minimal loop additions there. Awesome wouldn't mind rounding off this edge a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and slope it down a little bit more like that better. Now this is obviously personal preference. So do what you will with these. Wouldn't mind adding something similar to this. So I'm going to add in two loops here, add in another one there to do the same thing to the back. Make sure you change that to individual origins. And we would have to unsharpen this. I'm missing something though, there it is. Okay, that looks neat, but I do need to sharpen. these edges. Okay, I like that. Very cute. Again, very simple and easy to add. So one of the things I want to add is like a, a little bit of a frame on the outer edges. So that way I can do a painted detail in here. So first we'll add one loop here and we need to pull it over a little bit to make it even with the other side. So about there. And we'll go ahead and add a loop here as well so it's a little bit off of the armrest. So all we need to do is grab these three faces, hit A to extrude, and we're going to size them in. Size along the x-axis, make it somewhat of a nice shaped rectangle. Okay, and then we'll also just go ahead, select these. We're gonna hit E to extrude and go into side view and pull it out. Make it a little bit dramatic so that way you make sure that it prints visibly. And we'll go ahead and we need to make all of these edges sharp and hopefully it looks good. <laughs> So 
So I'm gonna tap out of edit mode and we're gonna model our floor to lay really quickly. So I have a clip art that I pulled off of Google saved for that. And then I'm just going to model it by tracing it. So I'm probably gonna speed through that process. You guys can follow along that way. I don't really have much to say. It's pretty much just extruding and following along the clip art. So, yep, enjoy watching that. I'm probably going to start with a plane and then go from there. Okay, see you guys in a minute. Okay, perfect. So now that our floor delay is modeled out, I am just going to hide my image because I don't need that anymore. And then all I need to do is grab everything and need to extrude, make sure that the normals are facing the right way. And I will have to sharpen a few of these edges. So we'll just do these two, shift E. Don't need it to be totally perfect, but just do where it counts. Awesome. Basically what I'm gonna do is tap out of this and I'm going to duplicate it just in case. So that way I can keep my original and then apply my two modifiers and have that all set. So I'm going to just pull that over there for now so I can hide it and unhide my throne. Let's go ahead and add in my cushions really quick and then I'm pretty much going to do the same thing that I just did is duplicate it so everything's good. And then after that, we can add in our floor delay and then I think that's all I needed to do for this. All right, for the cushions of the chair, let's do the seat cushion first. Definitely wanna add a loop here in the back, maybe about there. And then there's already a nice space there going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab those faces. Looks good. We're just gonna hit E to extrude. Go to the front view and pull that up some. I'm gonna size it in just a tad. We're gonna E to extrude again, pull it up some more, size it in. And one last time probably. Perfect. Um, you could leave as is, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen the edges around the base of the cushion to give it a little bit more of a crisp look. Yeah, I definitely like that. Awesome. So lastly, we just wanna do that to this one as well. I'm gonna add a loop here. Let's bring it off of that corner a little bit. And we'll go ahead and grab these and those. Perfect, E to extrude again. We're just gonna size in a little bit and pull that out. E to extrude again, pull that out some more, size in. Gonna size along the X axis a little bit more. And I think I wanna do that one last time. Not too far out though. I think that looks pretty good. Same thing, let's go ahead and sharpen those edges to make it really nice and, nice and crisp. Perfect. So now we have a nice cushion on the back and the bottom of the chairs and they're shaped pretty nicely. I like, I really like the shape that they ended up being in. Okay, so like I said, tab out we are going to shift D to duplicate so that way we can have our original throne nice and safe just in case if we decided to change anything up apply both of our modifiers 
And then we're going to go ahead and add in two Booleans. Oh, not two. We only need one today. <laughs> we're going to add one Boolean modifier. But really quick, I'm going to select everything. Go into the object mode, hit apply and rotation and scale just to make sure that our um, Boolean modifiers apply properly. So we're going to want to do difference, not intersect. And our floor delay might be a little bit big in the wrong direction. So we're going to rotate this negative 90 degrees and size it down a lot. And we're probably going to have to size it along the Y axis as well. Pull that over here. I'm going to keep sizing that down until it seems like it's appropriately sized. I think about there. And then what we'll do is size along the Y so it goes through. Like a nice hole punch. Okay. So all we'll have to do is do plane one because I forgot to <laughs> change the name. Oops. So we're going to hide that. Not that. We're going to hide the plane. Make sure that it punched out okay. Looks pretty good to me. Yep. I like it. And we're going to hit apply. Tab in. Make sure nothing crazy happened. Make sure there's no holes before we decide to print. Looks like that Boolean worked really well. Awesome. Okay, guys. So that is our throne. As per usual, I will be, or the new usual, I will be printing this out. See how this gets cut out. I'm worried about this part up here. Hopefully isn't too thin for the printer. Um, what I'll probably do is I'm going to lay it on the on its back and then that way it can print. I'm trying to explain what I mean. Yeah. So I'm going to print it like this. So it's lying on its back and then it only has to do scaffolding pretty much for the chair legs. But hopefully that'll let the um, floor delay be a little bit better printing out. So yeah. All right. Cool. Hopefully that comes out well. Um, if you guys have any questions, be sure to post them in the comments below. And just if you guys enjoyed this video or learned something, be sure to give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe as well. I really appreciate any feedback and requests. And I will see you guys in the next video.